<laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's basically yes, true. <laughs> So okay, going. I'm going back to the single curve again to simplify all the issues. So I select one curve. I select only top one. So all the story goes back to simple one. So now I'm going to uh, move the x one. But yes, we need to measure that. But what is the function to measure the x size? To know if that it is kind of irregular form. Huh? I just showed you when I mirror it. We are bounding box. So I select everything. I'll use bounding box. There's actually a command bounding box in Grasshopper later. So if you want to automate it, just use bounding box. But for now, uh, I just simplify the problem itself and I simply just measure it. So for X, good number is about six inch. Just for later, I just measure the Y too. So this was about oh, seven inch. So I just write down. So for x, I will move 6 inch, and for y, I will move 7 inches. And now we are going to move x. Okay, so let's move x. So simply, I just know that x is about 7. So I just, okay, so I, I'll show you another one, which is a double click here, and I type 7 and enter. It will give you a number slide. Hello. And then I will set that this type is integer. I just double check it. And then I'll set it as x. So now let's check it. So yeah, so the x is moved this much. But the question is, probably each curve should move to next and next and next, isn't it? Not just one. If I do everything, so now I will change that. Uh, if I select every curve, and actually, yes, everything is sitting on one location. How can I solve this problem? Change x and y. Huh? Change x and y. So the problem is, the pro what's, what's the difference between first curve and the next curve? On the x, uh, on the y, so Actually, z value. Z, 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 z value is actually different. So using that, Z value differences, I will multiply. Actually, no, not really. Actually, that's another one way. Isn't, isn't there any simpler way? So let's say, assume that we have 20 curves. I want to distribute first one, six, next one, 12, next one, 18, and next one. So this one is. 6 plus 1, 6, uh, six multiply 1, 6 multiply 2, 6 multiply 3. So if, huh? you yes. So what if we have this kind of a series of numbers? We can use this one by multiplying 6 inches. We can distribute or x directions. You got the idea? So what is the number we need? We need. 6 by 1, 6 by 2. So first one, we need 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we multiply or 6. So probably have 6, 12, 18. So we will generate this series of numbers step by step. You got the idea? So to generate a series of numbers, what kind of components should I use? Series. <laughs> Okay, so for y, you, you don't like series? <laughs> Should I change somewhere? <laughs> okay, so instead of using just simple number, I will generate, okay, I'll a little bit clean up. Okay, so I will move, the, okay, I'll just group them and then a little bit, and then I'll group it and then move way down. And then also I'll write down this one as, uh, this one create z vectors and just write down here so you got the idea and then I'll just group them okay so now I'm generating y value so I'll use series 
and series is actually need start step step count so I will use start for what should what is the start number really one so I just I just set it as I just extract parameters so start is I'll set it as one I write it and set number as one and step what is the step value one two three four so yes one I set as one what should be the count number What should be the count number? Six. Why? Not really. How many curves do we have? So let's. So how to know how many curves we will have? What I was going to do is. Okay, I will uh, delete this bounding box, and then delete it. And I will select. Uh, we are going only. Okay, we are just using only one. Now, so we are going to generate everything. So let's say how. What is the way to see how many elements inside? Tree viewer. And if you connect it, this one show that n is one of four. So there are one hundred four curves inside. Probably there's a function for that in Rhino. Uh, let me see. Set list. Uh, cross reference. I'll check it. Uh, list oh, list length. Measure the length of a list. So let's say let's measure that list length. Let's check using panel. And if I connect it, one of four. So now we got the number. How many numbers of curves are inside? So we are going to use this information to generate y the series of y. So count is 104. And let's see, let's check the value too. So series from 1 to 104. So is this okay? Does this thing look do you think is this look okay? Oh, really? So maybe it depends on your curves, probably. Actual model? So one of four curves I have. So it depends on your model, I guess. It depends on how you generate. Oh, actually, uh, everybody, can you check whether you have single curve for each? height or you some of you may have double curves in the same z plane can you check that anyone has multiple curve do you have it in your case you have to join them or you have to use z value actually then actually we cannot use it this one well, i will cover it again for you okay all right so for now i'm using a series of numbers generated and what what's the next step we have to multiply by six. I have a question. Yes. About the series. Uh huh. Where do you, uh, where do you connect the start and stop? I series first of all. Uh, I use list length to know how many items inside the list, okay, yeah. and actually the length is one of four, so I'm going to use that. So this list is connected to curve. Okay. So you got this one: a curve yeah. connected to list. And length is 104, and actually I'm using that value. And then, so length is connected to count? Yeah, count. And then the start and step? So start is 1, step is 1, count is 104. Oh, yeah. What is step? What's the step so difference? step is, what, how much distance between each number? So 1 and 2, 1, 2 and 3, 3 and 4. What if I change to step 2, 1 and 3, 3 and 5, 5, 7? This is additive. And then finally what we have to do, we are going to multiply 4y7 
So I'll uh, type. Uh, so I kind of multiply. I will type multiply with this series and value seven. So I write down seven and set data as seven. So this multiplication, the result. Can you see this one? So I connect with after series, I multiply all value to 7. And the result is 7, have 7, 14, 21, 28. So everybody has this so far? Okay, I'll just go one more. I, just, I just finished this one. So which is the last one is actually simply connect this result into y direction. So what this will see is it will distribute or y and everything is tight. Connect kind of like, okay. Uh, yeah, so now you see that everything is connected to y direction. Oh, actually, should we? No, actually we are going to connect it to x, not y. And then x should be simply 0. So we are going x first. So I will delete y, disconnect y. So now it is all distributed to x direction. So this one is so far distribute x. I will check uh, your problem.